you're working on the Dr. Sebi documentary. Yeah. But you're not you're not a fan of the 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 Sebi or, or you've been going back and forth uh with a bunch of individuals about mm-hmm. uh the aspect of who Dr. Sebi truly was. Right. I don't agree with uh some of the things that he was pushing. Right. Uh but Why? I respect him. Why? 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 Yeah, yeah. What what was it that you just you you had to be vocal and be like, look, because now they think you're a part of the 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 Illuminati and and one of the the, <laughs> the voices that have tried to <laughs> quiet the Doctor Savy in the the or you work for Big Pharma or something like that. Big Pharma, right? <laughs> I'm an agent. Yeah, <laughs> I was. Uh, I get checks from uh, from Pfizer on yeah, the loan exactly. to try to discredit Doctor Savy and his cure for everything. <laughs> um, well, I think that. Number one, his claims of curing a bunch of serious diseases don't have any medical procedure to actually prove it. Like when you say that, okay, I cured this, there is a procedure that every company has to go through to get FDA approval, you know, to show, okay, look, we did a test on this many people, this many other people got a placebo. This is what happened. Then we moved the test up to this, blah, blah, blah. And now beyond a shadow of a doubt, we've proven this. Yeah, that's the American scientific approach to how they prove things wrong. But I would even take a step back and say, what's your definition of cure? Because even when so-called diseases are cured, like polio was supposedly cured, but mm-hmm. it, in measles, like people have the measles again. Like, but there's a cure for it. But if there was a cure for it, then why are people still receiving it? And that's even why um, in this documentary we deal with terms like cure and healing. And when you go into the case uh, from the 1980s, they dealt with that specifically as well. Because the the beautiful thing about Dr. Savi, he never said, or he never was saying, I am the cure, or that I have this elixir or this cure that if you take this, your disease will be wiped away. He taught things like the African bio uh, mineral uh, approach to to your dietary lifestyle, um, really saying that uh, our bodies were designed to be self healing organisms, and if you put all of the proper things into your body, uh, you won't have to deal with all of the toxins that can destroy your body, or your body will be strong enough to get rid of those things. So with diseases, any diseases like cancers. AIDS, all of these things, he was just saying, I can get your body to such a level that it will be able to fight off all of those foreign entities in your body. And it's proven. Like he's and it's like it's proven through medical to where he would help he would somebody would come in with their paper from a, a an official doctor and he would get them on the on the plan and get them start taking the minerals and changing their lifestyle and then they would go get tested from that same doctor and then come back with results that said that their levels were at a negative uh, level. And that's, that's all facts. That was facts that were presented in court, and that's still facts to this day. And we have all of that paperwork and stuff to show that there's individuals that came in with something and left without it by going through this process. But then it goes back to, like I said, what's your definition of cure? Because even when they say that they have cures, there's still remnants that... Uh, it's about uh, the the toxins or the disease laying dormant and you controlling it and suppressing it. Someone like myself who was diagnosed with lupus in 2012, I feel like I have suppressed the lupus to such a place that if I do what I'm supposed to do, I won't be affected. As soon as I slip up and not having my water intake, not taking my medicine or my herbs or all of those things that keeps it dormant, it arrives back up. And I feel like from what I've learned thus far, that's what he, he speaks about. And it's really, it's like I said, it's not no magical elixir. It's like, yo, change your life and you'll be able to overcome these things. I fully agree with living a healthier lifestyle. Right. And from what I understand, a lot of his elec- his elixirs were actually food. That's, yeah, at the end of the day, that's you know, what minerals is, actually yeah. are. But when it went to court, they started looking at him, they realized that a lot of it is just food. Yeah, we touched on that because... Uh, one of the charges was practicing medicine without a license. Right. Where he was like, I don't practice medicine. You know, I, I have, uh, wh- whether you want to call it, a, I'm a herbalist or mm-hmm. a, a dietary, you know, consultant or wh- however you define it, he never was diagnosing people 
uh, with or without things. And he also was saying I, I, he wasn't delivering any chemicals. He was only giving raw foods of the earth. Right. Uh, I think the way it was presented, and maybe I need to go and look at. Oh, once you see the doc, you're going to see it because we're giving well, all the truth. See the doc. Yeah, it's all, and that's the thing. Like, I'm getting rid of all of the myths and the conspiracy. Yeah. I'm asking every question from his, his death to, you know, how, it, how even with Nipsey wanting to, to tap into it, to left eye. To, we ask every single question uh, and we find and uncover some serious things. And we go all the way back to, you know, the Tuskegee uh, experiment, to COINTELPRO, to mm-hmm. the possibility that the government created aids for the the fact that is a, a biochemical warfare we touch on all of it yeah uh and 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 unapologetically fearlessly just asking every question and we we uncover some interesting stuff yeah and i've said already that if you want me to be part of the documentary yeah, said, you, can the be, you, can side, be, you can be the naysayers that, if you want me to be a naysayer we got a lot of naysayers we got some uh some doctors we got some uh people who are attorneys uh who who are associated with the case, who didn't believe, you know, back then in the 80s and still feel like there's a lot of uh, non-truths. Because the thing is, no, I don't think anyone's ever taken the time to to lay it out in a detailed fashion. So we've been able to create a lot of this folklore and where there were loopholes and questions, we just put our own answers there. And that's usually what happens with conspiracies. Like, if you don't have the full answer, but you know something happened, you know the result, you'll make up the story of how we got to the result. Right. So we 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 find the answers to everything. And some of it isn't as fascinating as we want it to be. You know what I yeah. mean? Like even a simple fact a lot of people thought uh Dr. Save I know I was one of those people who thought that he represented himself. You know, he went in the courtroom barefoot, no lawyer and yeah. won the case. It's not that simple. Like he definitely had an attorney. De- you know like there was and and he went through the process in a proper way. But there are also some fascinating things to where like he masterminded this whole thing by even putting the ads in the papers and stuff. That was his purpose to show all of the amazing things that he was doing uh, within his his uh, his lab and, and everything that they had built. He wanted to get more attention on it. And he said he even had the conversations with his mother. It was like, yo, the way that you get everyone to understand because he also, he always felt that he was doing all this amazing work and people weren't talking about it. People weren't sharing it. He's like, so if I go up against the state of New York, if I get myself arrested, then everyone's going to know about it and everybody's going to know all the healing that I'm, I'm putting forth. And that's exactly what he did. Well, someone actually sent me uh, an article they wrote based on some of our interviews and they actually broke down the whole court case right. with the actual documents from the court case. Right. And they referenced his interview with Rock Newman. Yeah, yeah, it, they, he did that at Howard. I would love to see that too. Right, I'll, I'll send you the link. And yeah. basically, it just shows the inconsistencies in the interview and what actually happened. So, for example, let me, let me yeah, just, go let me just for say it. this. So, for example, he said that Judge So and So, you know, uh, wanted, you know, asked him to bring in like one witness, and the judge that he named was not the judge. That's that was on that. Court yeah, case. yeah, we're doing a lot first, of first and foremost. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, a yeah. totally different name, and he claimed that afterwards the judge, you know, became one of his patients and all that. But right. the, but the names aren't even the same. Right. He named a female judge in that interview, and there was a male judge on the actual case. And then when he said he brought in forty witnesses, there were actually no witnesses at all in that case. Right. We actually have all of the the, the documents. You one thing you gotta uh, respect and admire of Doctor Savi is that he. He was a man that was up there in his <laughs> in his in his years, uh, and only being able to speak in sound bites sometimes, he would be referencing because there were actually two cases, you know, that a lot of people don't know. There was the one that was actually against the New York State Supreme Court that was, and then there was a civil case after after the fact. So he's often referencing, and it wasn't a, you think case, you think it was actually over the course of about six years mm-hmm. uh and and even when he was arrested he was able he was set free and able to go continue his practice in puerto rico and there's so many things that we dive into that once you see the timeline and you hear the things that he spoke about even in the rock newman interview he could be referencing one case and then referencing another uh and again that's just he he had he spoke in sound bites mm-hmm. and you know we have him doing a lot of the narration through uh some interviews that we you know that have never been heard before and mm-hmm. we we helped the same way that whoever did that 
was probably pointing out the inconsistencies. We show how it all rolls together and really focus on on the case and telling it truthfully as we all want to hear it.